So our next speaker uh, used Firefox, I mean, he, he, use, he uses Firefox since version 1.0. That got him engaged at Mozilla somehow. He's a free and open source enthusiast, and he participated in several open projects. Today he's part of the Liberal Space Foundation, uh, because he started working full time on Satnogs, actually, so that's the cool thing, right? <laughs> so, so he's going to show about it. So please join me in welcoming Freddie from the Bleebot Space Foundation. Hello. Can you share me? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, who knows Satnox? Okay. Uh, That's good. <laughs> That's good because I'm going to do a quick pass uh, about what Sadnox is, and I'm going to focus mostly on what we have achieved the last year. So, uh, Sadnox is a ground station network, open source and open hardware, and open data, of course. So, all began at uh, hackerspace in Athens. Uh, during the Space Apps Challenge, uh, and then continued with the uh, Hagaday Prize, where we were the winners, and this, uh, the prize gave us uh, a boost for creating a Libre Space Foundation. So, uh, What's the goal of SADNOX? Goal of SADNOX is to allow satellite operators and researchers to uh, acquire the data of their satellites uh, from ground stations around the world. Uh, especially if we see this prediction from uh, uh, NanoSats uh, EU, you can see that more and more CubeSats and nanosatellites are going to be uh, deployed in the next years. So we need to automate this process to make it more efficient and more uh, stable, more uh, with better performance. Okay, so let's see uh, the, the parts of the SADNOX project. We have the ground station, which consists of uh, Sadnox rotator, or not. There are some Sadnox stations without uh, a rotator. It's the Sadnox client, which is the software that uh, connects to the network and get the jobs, the observations to, to perform. And uh, it is also the Sadnox GNU radio scripts that are uh, use the SDRs to get the signals from the satellites and do the demoding or decoding. Uh, Sadnox client is installed in any uh, Linux uh, with the minimum requirements of radio and Python. And uh, my, our main uh, platform is Raspberry Pi. Uh, Sadnox network is where uh, all the uh, ground stations connect to, to ask their jobs, and we can see there, uh, the, and then return their data there. And SadnoxDB is where all this data from network and other sources are going, uh, are gathered together to, uh, to be uh, online and free available. So let's see what we have done last year. Uh, about Sadnox Rotator, we have improved uh, and reached the version 3.1, and we have uh, managed to have a very detailed documentation in Wiki Sadnox. Uh, so, if you don't have a rotator and you want to set up a station, you, you can build one. Or, if you have one rotator, then you can use this one as the Sadnox is modular, so we don't limit users how, what they're going to use. So about the Sadnox, uh, Sadnox client, uh, we have automatically, uh, we, someone, someone can automatically 
install the client and configure it through Ansible scripts. This is how it looks like when you go to Raspberry Pi and run the uh, Ansible scripts. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it gets support from the, for the new radio scripts of uh, GeoSandbox, and we have, uh, we have changed the way we plot the waterfall and send it back to the network. Uh, for new scripts, new radio scripts, sorry, new radio scripts, uh, we have added uh, new modes. So now we are able to decode CW, APT from NOAA satellites, uh, DUV, BPSK, and most FSKs and APRS. And now we are going to the SADNOX network. Uh, the network has grown like 10 times from the last uh, presentation uh, in OS CW. Uh, this is a map of the online stations and testing stations that will soon be online. Uh, here is the uh, accumulated number of the stations since one, uh, for one year from uh, August of 2017 and for to uh, 2018, August 2018. You can see there are some, sometimes they get offline, sometimes they get online again uh, due to fixes or due to uh, some broken things that we fix in the code and the updates. But we are steadily uh, getting more and more uh, stations. Uh, here you can see uh, the observations per day for one year and how many decoded frames per day we had from one year. Right, right now we have almost uh, 1,000 uh, observations per day and almost uh, two to 3,000 observations, uh, sorry, decoded data uh, per day. Uh, Decoded data is either images or frames, and we don't get from each observation uh, decoded data. There are, we still uh, we still develop uh, new radio scripts to decode more and more uh, modes. Uh, I have video here to realize better. Uh, So here is uh, this one year uh, day per day video. Uh, on, and, and every spot is a data frame cast by a Sadnox station. All started in US uh, and soon it started, it was tested in US for the first time and then started in Australia and Europe and continued with more stations uh, getting in the network in North Europe, later in South Africa and Saudi Arabia. This data does doesn't, don't uh, include uh, the NOAA pictures that we decode. It's only data frames from uh, FSK and other protocols. So this is it more or less. So, uh, right now we are with more than 250,000 observations and with more than 250,000 decoded data in, uh, in the network side. And the next one is SADNOX DB, which uh, 
right now includes 274 satellites uh, and 493 transmitters. And we collect data from uh, 463 contributors. And we have reached, as can you see from the latest uh, screenshot, over uh, 21 million data frames. Uh, all of them are from uh, uh, telemetry forwarder or geosatellite seeds forwarder. So, uh, what about what uh, the next question, the next thing we should do was to, and was demanded from uh, uh, the uh, Sadnox network uh, owners, uh, Sadnox network ground station owners, was to start pushing those data from network to database and also starting to uh, see what all this data in DB actually is. So this was named like close the loop because you go from network, from ground station to network to DB and then decoded data and see what the satellites have to say to you. So the first one was uh, recently uh, resolved. Uh, it's still in our dev environment, but soon it will go to production. It works pretty well. And the second one, uh, with the help of our awesome contributors, uh, we managed to uh, create a Grafana dashboard, more than one Grafana dashboards for satellites. Uh, this is for uh, Unisat 6 and this uh, one is for Sirius 1 and 2. Uh, the way we do this is uh, using Katai IO, which is uh, a way to uh, struct uh, uh, to describe how is, uh, how is the struct of the raw data that we get from satellites and then push it in the DB and continue. So next steps of Sadnox is to expand to uh, higher frequencies. Uh, there are already some tests. Uh, to expand to more SDR uh, via GR survey, which is uh, part of uh, SDR Makerspace uh, initiative. Uh, Automate observation scheduling, uh, which needs uh, more work. And of course, keep growing the vibrating Sadnox community worldwide, especially in uh, South America and uh, in Asia. And of course, Africa. Thank you. Thank you. So we have uh, yeah, one question over question, there. Yeah. Over there and here, perfect. Okay, go ahead. Uh, so, could you go back to the, uh, the the slide of the uh, the graph? This one, right? So, if I had a CubeSat mission of my own, especially one with limited funds, like from a university or something, I'd be really interested in seeing something like this. Um, what would you need from satellite operators or or you know an, a CubeSat mission mm -hmm. in order to be able to decode those frames and, and be able to display them like this? Uh, the thing that we will need is the struct of the uh, row pa packets that satellite uh, transmits in order to uh, build the CATI IO struct or uh, the university or the entity that has the satellite can create the CATI IO struct and give it to us to uh, use it. Uh, still is under just uh, saying that uh, I won't say that still is under development testing of the platform, but uh, I, I guess that this also soon will be in the production uh, side. All right, we have another question you, over you there. Also, you also also provide us uh, the framing scheme of uh, and the modulation of your transmission. This is uh, right now the the, the worst problem in uh, CubeSat missions. They do not use a standardized one. So eventually decoding the satellite uh, uh, ends up to be a reverse engineering process, which is quite difficult. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so yeah, you guys follow a standardized pattern and uh, just announce it. 
so we can uh, get your data. Yeah, in, in general, be loud about your mission. I mean, TLEs, uh, initial TLEs, uh, modes, frequencies, help us to help you to build something nice. Right, and also, I forgot to say that these are live data. I mean, uh, as soon as they get in database, uh, they decode it and they are pushed to uh, DB and shown in the dashboards. They are time series in the end. Yeah, exactly. All right. Juan. Hi, uh, thank you for the presentation. I know very little about radio amateur stuff or software defined radio or anything, but I would love to get involved in this, like having my own station, building and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, in your opinion, what is going to be the most difficult challenge or the most tricky part of it? Well, you can start with something simple like a, a static station with a turnstile antenna, a Raspberry Pi and RTL-SDR, which is the cheapest and the easiest one, and start contributing and then build on it more and more with a rotator and learning more and more in, in the process. Okay, so connected to this question, uh, I have two things. Uh, one, a report that I teach at the university and last uh, semester I tried my students and pointed to Sagnos and said, okay, build it. And they managed to do it in groups of five from ground with the rotor in three months. So nice. we, they built in the antenna also. Mm -hmm. So it was excellent uh, experience for them. Oh, so, applause, I mean. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they deserve it, they deserve it. And the second question is, um, there is a group in Guatemala which is launching their CubeSat mm -hmm. next year. And how, they need to have a ground station operational to be part of Sagnos or they can use Sagnos with only the CubeSat? Uh, right now, in order to schedule an observation, you need to have a ground station mm -hmm. in the network. This is the only limitation. But we, as community and as amateur radio, uh, as radio amateurs, we also uh, watch what's happening around us. And we have almost uh, every month uh, get new satellites in the B and watch for them. But it's much easier for us to uh, to work with us, give us uh, as many as uh, you can information to build something before the deployment. <laughs> and to hunting after deployment, finding TLEs, finding frequencies and modes and stuff like that. That's cool. So we have a question in the back, then in the front. Yeah. Uh, I'm Luke. I'm doing uh, flight dynamics. So what my, I would be interested in this uh, kind of, um, of, of such a ground station is are you able with your antenna to get some uh, measurements from the signal, say Doppler or something like that, that could be gathered by your network and then processed afterwards in order to recompute the orbit and to, to get rid of these TLEs <laughs> and to, to, get, uh, to provide you with, uh, with, with true orbit. Uh, can you do measurements with this? And we could do the, the, the orbit, but if I'm, you can I'm provide sure measurements. I'm not sure exactly the question. It's are, you, are you, from the ground station, from the signal that you get from the spacecraft, are you able to extract some measurement from the carrier, for oh, example, oh. from Doppler or oh, anything yes, like that, yes. uh, that we could the, process? The, there are some plants that we need to try to extract our TLEs from what we get from satellites, but still is in... Uh, yeah, to to yeah, extract the orbital data from... Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. From frequency. Ah, ah, here, here. here. Yeah. <laughs> Why do not you have uh, antennas in South America? Why is South America? So, South America? Don't have an antennas mm -hmm. in um, South America. Why? I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you have to ask yeah, the marketing my, my, uh, my guess, team. My guess is, uh, I don't know, it's just a guess. I, I don't know, really it's, that probably it's uh, a language barrier, maybe, uh, or 
I don't know. I really don't know. It's hard to answer, but yeah. But that's a good question. So actually, the, before I ask my question, I think there's at least one site next ocean in Brazil now, yeah. as far as I'm aware. Yeah. So I believe there are now some emerging stations. That would be awesome. <laughs> um, I'm kind of curious where you're going to go with SAPNOX, and it's a big question, so feel free to just take as much of this as you want. Um, but you know, right now it's a free model. People have to have a ground station to request um, to you know schedule observations at other ground stations. I'm kind of assuming you'd like people to start viewing SATNOGs as something they plan into their mission as, as their actual primary ground station network. And there's a whole bunch of questions that go with that. That would include the uplink, the command and control, how that might be protected and safeguarded in the terms it needs to be encrypted mm -hmm. and protected, uh, how you might monetize SATNOGs to basically provide revenue to people who provide ground station services for commercial missions? That's probably enough questions. Yeah. <laughs> so about uh, uplinks, it's something that, that uh, we are looking uh, on. Uh, it's not a simple thing uh, for many reasons, legal or uh, implementation reasons, but uh, it's, it's something that we plan to do in the, in the future. I mean, we have, uh, we have some experience from uh, UPSAT. We have, uh, we have implemented a kind of uh, ampling uh, interface to uh, be in action, but uh, we didn't uh, proceed more with this. Uh, but it's something that we are open to, to implement. Uh, about the revenue of it's a good question I mean what what the, the revenue about a satellite owner is that he can already uh, get uh, satellite his satellite data from uh, around the world I mean it's it's something that with one ground station is not able to be to be done. Uh, about uh, individual users, most of them are radio amateurs that uh, love to hunt satellites. So, uh, Freddie, another yeah. another answer on that is that uh, there, there is a legal problem transmitting data and or receiving data outside yeah. of radio amateur frequencies, and it's illegal to transmit encoded data inside a radio amateur frequency. So. If you want to have your data encrypted or something, you need to have a frequency outside ham frequencies, and then you have a license in order to receive in this frequency. So I think it's a very complicated thing. Yeah. If you are, if you know something, or you can help. You I think it's a topic of discussion on the work group. But we have uh, an answer for the South America part. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, please I'm go ahead. The question about South America missing ground station. Uh, we're planning to build one mm -hmm. sat nodes maybe next year. Where, week. where? In Argentina. Argentina, okay. <laughs> hey, so one close Brazil, to that, one right? <laughs> so we need help for, forget it. Okay, all right. Okay. So we, ha we have to, to cut now. So thank you, thank you, Freddie.